Ramadan Kareem to all those celebrating around the world. My name is Muhammad, and this is the Sports Gazette Roundup. Presenting with me is Jaden Dakwa, and today at the Sports Gazette, we are celebrating Women's History Month and championing some of the incredible female athletes. With that in mind, our first story comes from around the corner. On a chilly Wednesday night, our reporter Julia Anderson visited Bedfont Sports Club to watch Brentford's team training. We're now joined by Julia in the studio. Julia, can you tell us a little more about that experience? Yeah, so the Brentford women team has a pretty interesting story. It was started by a father-daughter duo, Amy and Roger Crook, over 30 years ago, and they're still part of the team now as the general manager and club secretary. So I went and I talked to them about their 30-year journey, working together as a father-daughter, and now their nephew's part of the team as well, and just about their, their goals and for the season and for the players themselves. Here's more on this story and what makes the Crook family so unique. Meet father-daughter duo Roger and Amy Crook. Roger started the Brentford women team in 1990 so a teenage Amy could play football. Over three decades later and they're still part of the team which officially partnered with Brentford FC three years ago. So it all started obviously with uh, my dad um, being asked to run an under-14 team. Uh, that was football in the community at the time, so under the Brentford banner, but football in the community. And he snapped at the chance. Amy and her dad have been lucky to work side by side in different roles for the team since its inception. Uh, so he's chairman and club secretary, so, and also my father. Uh, the relationship, we, we work really well. I mean, gosh, I couldn't ask for a better dad, seriously. Uh, and to get to work with him, He'll probably say something different, but no, to get to work with him is, you know, it's like an ultimate goal. Not one point I can honestly say hand on heart, I've never ever fallen out with her. Or we've never ever had a cross word. Um, but on another side, yeah, she's a pain in the neck. Um, but no, no brilliant. I'm, I'm just very lucky, very blessed. The most recent addition to the family tradition is Amy's nephew Cameron, who joined as goalkeeping coach four years ago. I think we've got a good balance where even when we're at home, it's not work, work, work. And when we're here, it's not just play, play, play. We've got a sort of good balance of work and sort of play at the same time. So although we can come here, we can sort of crack a few jokes. But then it's also right, if there needs to be sort of serious conversations, then there's serious conversations. And then at home, we can mess about, and I'm not worried about sort of playing with my auntie, sort of in the garden, um, who's also my general manager. Now with the backing of Brentford Football Club, all focus is on promotion. To get up those tiers um, in the pyramid table and then reach, you know, top flight football, um, support these players through um, strengthening their selves uh, through well-being to um, making them strong, making them elite players. Um, so that transition is, you know, easing in now um, and just giving them the best opportunity in their football career. This has been Julia Anderson reporting for the Sports Gazette. The Brentford women's team will soon be in the spotlight when they play at the GTEC Community Stadium for just the second time on Sunday as they prepare for a massive fixture against Ashmal Leigh our reporters Max Flanagan and Johnny Coffey headed down to Brentford to find out more. Brentford women play at the GTEC Community Stadium only for the second time in their history as they face Ashmount Lee in the league at 3pm on Sunday afternoon. Captain Molly Holmes will be eager to lead her team to yet another victory. Brentford come into the game in fine form. They're currently protecting a 12-game win streak that they've held since the start of December. Brentford women general manager Amy Crook feels this will be a great opportunity to show how far the women's team has come since last season's GTEC fixture. Head coach Carly Osborne has led his team to a perfect 2024 so far, with two cup finals and a league title still up for grabs. The Bees are currently in fifth position on 25 points, but have five games in hand on the league leaders on 41 points. It's Ash Mount Lee's first season in the Division 1 North and an opening day 3-2 win over the Bees at the start of the season was their biggest result yet. The Bees made their GTEC debut back in November 2022, where a record crowd of 5,116 fans turned up to see them beat Watford Development Ladies 4-2. They'll be hoping for a similar result and also be hoping to beat that record again. You can read all about it on the Sports Gazette. It's been a decade since women's boxing was introduced into the Olympics. We are joined by our boxing expert, Oscar Pick, who has more to discuss about the sport. Welcome, Oscar. 
Can you tell us more about the history of women's boxing at the Olympics? Absolutely. Um, women's boxing at the Olympics only returned in London 2012 after a century where women weren't given the opportunity to compete at the Games. And you just look back on the fighters in that talent pool and the likes of Katie Taylor, Nicola Adams, both winning gold, of course. It just paved the way for the fighters and the talent we're seeing in boxing now. I think the Olympics is so important and it's so central to boxing, not just men's boxing, but women's boxing. Any athletes to watch out for in Paris 2024? Yeah, um, Cindy Ngamba will be representing the refugee team, actually. So she was the first uh, refugee fighter to qualify for boxing. And um, although she's based in Bolton, she's uh, looking to secure her UK citizenship. But in the meantime, she's obviously given this fantastic opportunity. And I think her talent, it speaks for itself. She's got a very good chance of meddling. So I'll definitely look out for her. Nice. Good luck to her. And if you want to keep up with the latest boxing news, check out Oscar's work in the description. Here at St. Mary's University, we're well known for our vibrant athletic community, including Kate Esley Morris, an elite long distance runner. Sports Gazette's own George Bennett finds out more about her incredible journey so far. So those running Telford that are going to do either 10, 5, 5 or 10, 7 and a half over there. Meet Kate Esley Morris, an amateur athlete chasing her dreams to become one of Britain's next long distance running stars. At the moment I'm based in Teddington and I train with the St Mary's Endurance Performance Centre. Push! She isn't shy of setting her expectations high. Having already competed against some of the top athletes in Europe at the prestigious Highgate Harriers Night of 10,000m PBs, she is now looking to earn herself international recognition. My ultimate goal would be to run in a Great Britain vest. Um, I imagine this will probably be over a longer distance, um, like half marathon or marathon. That's where it's kind of heading and where I look strongest. Like I'm definitely better over the longer distances. Most would assume that an athlete of her calibre is sponsored and gets paid to train and compete. However, this is far from the case. So I'm still in my first year of like, being out of university and my first like, full-time job. Um, so I'm really lucky that the team I work with are very understanding of my goals outside of work. Um, so I'm in a position where I do work from home part of the week. So these are my training days. Um, and on these days, I'll start work a bit earlier so that I can then take my break to go and train with the group. Kate isn't the only one in her family to chase dreams of athletic prowess. Her husband George is an ex-Team GB and Commonwealth fencer who is now her strength and conditioning coach and training partner. Um, the reason that I've designed the SNC the way I've designed it for Kate is that we've got a lot of ankle and foot conditioning. Imagine you're trying to crush a can underneath your foot with as much force as possible. Today you saw her do a three-quarter squat off the pins. Uh, this is like a super maximal exercise that we can do. So really sort of eliciting those big strength gains and adaptations. Most amateur distance runners never turn running into a career. But with her near-perfect work-life balance, it appears that it's all systems go in the Esley Morris household. And that is all we have time for today. Make sure to check out all the coverage on the Sports Gazette website and follow us across all social media platforms. But for now, it's a goodbye from me. And a goodbye from me. See you soon.